Great. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, everyone. Um, is this working? You can see it? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. OK, great. So um, thank you for the time to present uh, Tessie and the, and the committee. We also presented at the SIOP meeting in Ottawa. And as Tessie said, um, our program already uh, finished. So I'm sharing on the completion of the program and also a bit of follow up after that. Um, Kencare Africa is, the region, is a regional network in Sub-Saharan Africa. Currently nine sites participating with the center leads being in Blantyre, Malawi. And the vision of Kencare Africa is that children with common and curable cancer types um, will have a survival over 60%. And we currently have three projects, the Wilms Africa project, Sucre Supportive Care, and Zero Abandonment from Start to Finish. And you may see in these three projects our mission specific contribution we are really focusing on developing uh, implementing and evaluating adaptive treatment guidelines and uh, preventing treatment abandonment uh, reducing treatment related mortality the sio par program um, was in line with that and of course uh, focusing on uh, uh, building uh, research capacity, uh, overall goal, improve research capacity. And we divided that in three components to formalize the clinical research infrastructure, structure, local and central data managers, uh, to facilitate the completion of two ongoing multi-center studies, um, and to develop the infrastructure and the process for research grants. And I'll report on all three of them. And what we did was, uh, so this is sort of the first component. And then I think you can see that we have the goals, then we have the activities and the highlighted ones, hopefully in green, are the final deliverables. So if they are in green, then we need to be delivered on what we were hoping to deliver on. If it's yellow, then we're not 100% satisfied. So on this first component, the local and central data managers, yes, uh, very happy. We did have for the whole year nine uh, local data managers whose salary was paid with the SIA Park grant and them having dedicated time for high quality data collection was really crucial. And yes, very happy. We did have a central data manager, Cecilia, who's still working with us and is doing a great job, really learned a lot. and. Uh, uh, was more and more supervising uh, uh, the data management and giving feedback to the local data manager. Yes, in green, very happy. We did have monthly web meetings with the local project and data managers as planned. They always all attended, were very, very motivated, are also all still working with the teams. So that's good, even though the SIA Park program um, uh, finished. Meetings with the site leaders monthly were a bit more difficult for the site leaders to attend, which I think is one of the components of our program. There's such limited capacity that the senior people also have so many other tasks on their plate. So it's very difficult for them to, um, yeah, they're pulled in so many directions. Follow up on this component is uh, focusing on this area, the local research capacity building ownership and local leadership. Uh, Kencare Africa is now registered in Malawi, which is very important for the future to have it uh, more and more based in Africa. We have a process for transition of leadership roles, uh, actually these coming weeks and months, and are very hopeful that we will have an African incoming chair of Kencare Africa and an African incoming chair of Wilms Africa, uh, who will most probably be uh, either him or herself or combined with a young leader. So that if there is another opportunity for a SIOPAR career building grant, we will then be able to apply. Also in terms of progress, uh, our steering committee member, Vivian Painsel, is now leading the Wilms effort for SIOP Africa. And I am actually, having been the chair for Wilms Africa, I'm now leading the development of the guideline for Wilms Area. So it's all following up nicely and for the Wilms for the next Wilms Tumor collaborative uh, thing in Africa. We're hoping to combine all these efforts. 
Um, then component two for the SIO Park, back to the program and the funding. Uh, train and research skills, as said, we had two studies to finish, uh, which we did happily in green and included more patients than expected, 230 for Wilms and uh, 400 for this uh, succor study. And because of these motivated and uh, data managers with dedicated time salary support by Sia Park, we did have over 95% complete data which I think as a group is something to be very pr proud of in our region. Well, in any region, but also in ours. Um, and the central data manager really, really stepped up and is, uh, has, have, has been having such a steep uh, learning curve. Then we briefly already, in terms of the other component, discussed the uh, wet meetings. And yes, in green, uh, again, the monthly wet training, uh, training meetings for the local and central data managers were done and uh, quite successful. Follow up in this area, uh, further output, we did have from these two and some previous studies, three papers accepted and two submitted, four abstracts submitted for SIOP, Africa, SIOP, uh, two further papers in progress and two PhDs in progress. And are planning uh, start a series of brief videos on local evidence, uh, can care for social media. So I think that's also um, uh, how do we say a follow up or spin off of this uh, Sayo Park grant. So many thanks for that. Then the third component uh, to develop and submit competitive uh, research proposals. Uh, yes, in green, uh, we did deliver on preparing and submitting uh, three competitive research grant proposals as we had sort of uh, promised or, or anticipated. Uh, one of those three was, uh, was awarded. And we were not that successful in yellow to have all the meetings as planned with the steering committee members to write these funding grants, which comes back to what I said before, that our senior leaders have so many other tasks on their plate. Um, the last activity of this third component was to organize a work, work meeting for Kenke Africa with support from Sayo Park, uh, which was possibly the most successful of all, which was the meeting in April 2023, where eight out of nine site leaders participated and two out of three members of the advisory committee. And we had time to have workshops and um, discuss all the things that I've mentioned today as well, the projects, the papers, the transition of leadership roles. So that was very, very useful. Follow up for that uh, in the area of funding and fundraising. We currently have the funding from Foundation S for one of our projects have uh, a couple of research funding proposals in uh, progress, some of them for WILMS, and the WILMS ones were anticipating to be doing them together with SIOP Africa, uh, having a young African leader being the PI. Uh, and our next annual meeting for the group is uh, planned for September 2024 in uh, Malawi. And Casey, since you're so nearby, you're most welcome. Uh, and thank you very much, Saya Park Committee, for your support. It has been instrumental for us to keep going and make progress. And um, looking forward to continue to join forces. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks very much, Trin. Um, shall we take um, uh, a couple of minutes to ask any questions? Because Trin would have to run after this. Anybody? Uh, just That's so you right. know, everyone had the full proposal uh, ahead of the this meeting. Carl, do you have a question? Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> uh, the report, it's great to see all, all the work that was done. I mean, just, just from a park leadership perspective, I just love to get feedback on, on how you feel this mechanism, what was or was not effective. Like is, um, are there things about this, this mechanism that, that we should, um, kind of work on investing further in some parts of it that were less helpful. I'd just love to kind of hear what your experience was as a grantee. So thank you for asking. 
Um, um, I think we enjoyed the fact that it was uh, the first time for Sire Park and we felt loyal to the shared mission of uh, developing Sire Park as well. Uh, the plus, I think, was that it was very clear that it was research capacity. Uh, and the plus was also that within that domain, uh, we were then very free to uh, propose our own, what we would need. Um, I have for us, the funding available, um, we couldn't really, we couldn't spread it over two years. So we had to ask for one year and then we're without after that one year. So that was a bit difficult, I think. Um, but the world cannot always be as you would wish it to be. Great. Thanks. That's that's great feedback. And you, you clearly accomplished a lot. So it's really great to see that I think the, at least the, the intent of this being a, a catalyst seems to be helpful. And I, I think the question of sustainability is something we have to think about strategically. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was addressing as well. Correct. Yeah. Um, I see Eric has a question. Yeah, no, thank you. You know, this is not my uh, area, but uh, I congratulate you and I'm aware of your work with uh, Foundation S and this is great. Uh, one question I want to know is, can you give us uh, some idea of the publication and was uh, SIOP or PARC uh, acknowledged in the publication? Um... You mean the 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 nature of the, the topics of the publications or the or the just yeah just, just briefly what what were the, the publication you mentioned you had free publication okay so we had a couple of commentaries on the work and we've submitted uh, one on cost effectiveness one of implementation science one on end of treatment outcome um, and we've just submitted two Wilms Africa papers which are really about the research being done. And are planning to are working on two more Wilms Africa papers and four more Sukor papers, and uh, both Foundation S and Sia Park are acknowledged in all publications um, because of the support. Okay, thank you. thank you. Okay, Casey, you have the last question, and then we have to move to Gallo. Sure, thanks, Trin. Just uh, amazing work. I had a question about the PhDs that you mentioned in training. I think that sort of career development <clears throat> is extremely important. My question was, how were those PhDs identified as, as through this grant funding mechanism? And and yeah, how did that search go? How were they chosen? And, and where are they getting their PhDs? Thanks. Thank you for asking again. So we're aiming for uh, paper-based uh, PhDs. So in general, five PhDs, uh, first or second author. Um, we've been publishing quite a bit with Kencare Africa and uh, the site leaders uh, always, when they bring their active contribution, they're, they're eligible to be first author. Uh, so there are two people who have uh, now three and four publications, first or second author. One is doing uh, her PhD in the Princess Maxima Center. Oh, there are actually three PhDs. Uh, two in the Princess Maxima Center and one in uh, Cape Town University. So it's a sort of, uh, maybe that answers your question better. It's a sort of publishing papers. And then at some point at two and a half papers th thinking, hey, would you not like to do a PhD? Then let's go for it. Thanks very much, Trin. Thank you. And uh, feel free to stay and listen to as much as you can. And now we're going to move to Gallup. So Gallup pre-recorded their presentation, but they're here with us. Just for connectivity issues, let's hear the video first. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity of sharing with you Gallup progress in park project to date. Uh, Gallup stands for the Latin American Pediatric Oncology Group. We are a cooperative group uh, that works with clinical trials that are located in Montevideo, Uruguay. My name is Milena Villarroel. I'm a Chilean pediatric oncologist, and I'm the chair of Gallup since 2020. Gallup is constituted by 34 institutions and more than 70 members. Gallup was 
uh, constituted in 2008 in uh, Montevideo, Uruguay, by the main public reference centers for diagnosis and treatment of pediatric cancer in four countries of uh, South America. Initially, we wanted to facilitate international collaborations with COG, but we developed into a group that was uh, uh, designing regional studies, conducting randomized trials, and implementing novel strategies. By 2022, we have evolved into an independent cooperative clinical study platform for solid tumors with more than 2,000 treated patients, more than 500 in randomized studies. The studies uh, are uh, uh, basically osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, retino, blastoma, germ cell tumors, and Hodgkin lymphoma. And uh, we address issues of quality of treatment, survival, and quality of life. We have generated knowledge as an input for resource allocation and public policies, and we have been developing a logistic capacity for research. The challenges of Gallup uh, rely on, we, on the fact that we primarily uh, look for uh, funding for projects uh, by uh, for funding for projects uh, by uh, uh, PIs, and that's an important barrier for participation. We have limited resources for basic and translational research, and we must nowadays keep a solidarity principle towards teams in the rest of Latin America whose resources are in our earlier developing phase. Considering the challenges that we just mentioned, Gallup applied for PARC funding, and uh, we wanted to uh, operate as a formal institution and develop the capacity to build sustainable structures to conduct high quality pragmatical clinical research. This was our overarching objective, and uh, we relied on four pillars uh, pillars uh, formalizing and regularizing and updating regulatory and administrative processes, strengthening research capacity and existing networks, and expanding to additional centers and protocols. Our final uh, idea is to develop a Gallup strategic plan using all these uh, elements uh, uh, in um, in consideration. Now, I wanted to introduce uh, Rocio Alonso. She is Gallup's project manager, and she will show you the uh, what we have achieved and uh, our pending issues regarding a uh, park project development. In terms of the first objective, we achieved legal entity status for Gallup. We also uh, acquired a root number, which is um, very important because without it, you cannot make an invoice or ask for a bank account uh, and many administrative issues. Um, we also are uh, refining our institutional agreements and uh, have appointed a representative to carry out legal procedures. This is something that um, is very important for Gallup since the board is from different countries and none of them resides in Uruguay and this has been recently sorted out. Uh, so we are working on an institutional framework agreement of collaboration, which is uh, still under discussion and also for a, an institutional policy for data protection and specimen management. In terms of our second objective, we managed to hire two study coordinators for Spanish and Portuguese speaking region. This is uh, necessary for effective coordination and management considering language and cultural barriers. And we also uh, recruited ahead of time a data manager and her primary focus has been establishing a centralized data system in REDCap, emphasizing data accuracy and consistency, monitoring usage, and insurance compliance with ethical and legal standards. She will also serve as the liaison between the data managers associated with Gallup 
then we will be able to centralize uh, the support through training. In 2023, a Gallo Annual Meeting was organized uh, in Florianopolis as part of the Latin American Congress of Pediatric Oncology and flight and accommodation costs were covered by PARC to ensure the attendance of more members and to improve representation from active protocols and countries and also a scientific six-hour program including presentations on retinoblastoma, hepatoblastoma, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma and neuroblastoma were, uh, were held and there were many initiatives in order to promote Gallup activities in potentially collaborating institutions and in 2024 there will be the, we decided to split uh, the more scientific um, dissemination meeting to also match the Latin American Congress of, of Pediatric Oncology and now in March we are meeting in Montevideo, Uruguay uh, for uh, a more internal um, examination of the protocols and uh, the next step to follow. In terms of our fourth object, in terms of our fourth objective, expansion of clinical trials as different groups in the, in the region consolidated in the last year, joint work between them has been developed, especially for renal tumors, rare tumors or hepatic tumors. Online discussion for protocol design and case resolution, which was one of our, our deliverables for renal tumors and histiocytosis, uh, were achieved. Uh, progress in protocol design uh, for both Williams tumor and histiocytosis studies and there are currently regular meetings led by international experts to discuss clinical cases and also uh, we are in an exploration stage in terms of the processes for institutional review board submissions in one of the protocols especially. So uh, there was the introduction of online session for open women's discussions and protocol development, uh, building capacities and cap capabilities in diagnosis in renal tumor that was led by Alejandra Casanovas. Wrapping up, our first year achievements in this project have uh, been making significant progress in regulatory, administrative, and research aspects. We have formalized processes that help us to build capacity and enhance research management. We have strengthened through collaboration research networks, and we have been expanding into new clinical trials. And finally, Gallup has been dedicated and continued to dedicate to its mission and has promising prospects for the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Milena and Rocio. Uh, let's see if uh, the colleagues have any questions for this particular presentation and the work that Gallup has done so far. Uh, I see Eric's hand. Is this a new hand, Eric? Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. No, that's amazing. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so are uh, all South American country joining Gallup or are there some country that have not joined Gallup yet or uh, have decided not to join Gallup? We are in uh, that process. We are, uh, and that's one of the objectives of the PARC project, to be able to strengthen not only our internal uh, uh, networks that were initially between the four countries of South America, but now we are collaborating uh, with the countries all over Latin America. And our goal is to include as many institutions and members to the current protocols as possible. So okay. that's why we have these uh, two main uh, uh, two main protocols in um, uh, renal tumors and uh, histiocytosis, 
And we have nearly ready a protocol in a patoblastoma that's a collaboration between Gallup and AOPCA from Central America. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions for Gallup? It's okay if we don't have questions. So we have one more year to see how much more progress they make. And it's very exciting to see. And I, I appreciate the, uh, the hard work. And um, I know it's a lot of administrative and logistical issues uh, and hurdles to overcome. But hopefully once this is in place, then you can focus on the research um, work uh, more uh, peacefully. Okay, so we have uh, Ramandeep. Uh, maybe we can hear from our India colleagues or anybody else. Okay, let's see. Good evening, everyone. You can hear me? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Yes, and thank you for the opportunity to present uh, a, a year's work, which uh, we have done with the kind support of, of the SIOP Park grant. And I'm presenting on behalf of the Indian Pediatric Hematology Oncology Group. Um, so we had uh, three objectives and I have uh, been inspired by Trine and I've pinched her yellow and green color code just to make it easier. So uh, the first objective was to create a uniform pediatric cancer data set for a pediatric specific hospital based cancer registry and then to train the staff in capturing the data and to build this capacity into 50 different institutions. Uh, so within this, there were four sub-objectives. Uh, the first two were about designing a data set and getting access to an online database. And the data set has been designed and consensus has been achieved. The server has been purchased. Uh, uh, the form is on REDCap and it is being utilized right now. It is being used for two projects. The first is the city of Chennai in South India, which is a, a hospital-based childhood cancer registry uh, which converts into a population, the first population-based child cancer registry of India. Uh, and that has been developed and it's been going on. Uh, and you can see the number of centers and the number of patients. And the next is to develop this for all the INFOG hospital-based cancer registries, which would be 50 plus in number. Uh, and that work, the proposal has been drafted. It is undergoing peer review right now. And we hope to initiate this by the summer. Uh, within this, there was another aspect which was conducting training workshops for our uh, clinical research assistants or clinical research coordinators, as we call them. And uh, one such workshop, which had around 70 people, was held in, again, Chennai, um, where we had both data registry staff as well as clinical research coordinators who entered data from various centers. But what we want to do now this year is convert the content of the workshop into self-paced videos where new staff who are joining can log in, conduct it, do a, uh, listen to it, do a pre-test, post-test, and get the certification. So we are not, um, we don't have to only organize physical events, but it can be available online, and that should happen this year. Uh, the fourth part was to actually hire the staff and to um, uh, equip them, and I think this was the where the lot of support from. Uh, both SIOP Park and other sources of funding uh, has gone. So uh, this was um, our first group photo. This is the team which has developed since the money came in February last year. And in November in Chennai, we had 11 clinical research assistants and one grant manager and one communication manager. And uh, uh, they have all been equipped with a laptop and internet connection. And they're all across the country in different hospitals. And the plan now is to keep building on this. Uh, we have uh, other sources of funding. And so uh, right now we have 48 INFOG member institutions. And we hope that in the next 12 months, uh, most, if not all, can have uh, dedicated staff there funded through various resources. Our second objective was to try and develop frontline uh, prospective interventional studies on the six WHO index cancers. And I know it's a busy slide, uh, but I just want to take you through it. 
so for ALL, we already had a study in place before this uh, grant started, and that study has finished completion. It was open in five centers, two and a half thousand plus patients. But what is more important is that that study was recognized by the Indian government, and the Indian Council of Medical Research has now funded an implementation study to be done across 25 government hospitals. And we are hoping to raise money for another 15 hospitals, so total 40 hospitals where this study can be done. In parallel with the completion of the first ICICLE study, the uh, development of ICICLE 2 has started and is expected to be launched in certain selected centers by end of next year, which is 2025. Uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, we have a frontline randomized controlled trial looking at radiation as an intervention, um, and that is already open in nine centers. We've got funding for this from the National Cancer Grid, and many cent further centers are joining this. Uh, Burkitt lymphoma is an area where we would want to develop something. There is a, a interim observation study which should start this year, but we are also excited about uh, the study which Venkat and Prashant are developing and some of you will know that he they got the uh, grant from the NKICF uh, Foundation for that, and um, uh, they were one of the winners for this. And that randomized controlled trial trying to reduce the intensity of treatment for Burkitt's lymphoma should be uh, developed by next year. Uh, Low-grade glioma, we are working actively with the Indian Society of Neuro-Oncology and planning uh, and, and discussing a few ideas, and there should be a study uh, up and running and enrolling by the end of this year. Uh, retinoblastoma, there was a study which has already uh, uh, been going on for a few years and that continues to recruit. And finally, Wilms tumor, uh, we have had several meetings with the Sayop Umbrella team and we are very keen to try and get this study to India, which would again be a landmark for us because that would be the first international clinical trial which would then be open to several centers across the country. And so that's an important a uh, milestone for us. Um, so just in the process of submitting a grant proposal for the pathology review component of the study, which is the main cost besides the staff, which we are using our existing staff. So that's the update on objective two. And my final slide is on objective three, which is we wanted to form a group of civil society uh, stakeholders along with healthcare professionals and work on setting research priorities uh, knowledge translation, patient engagement, etc. This is an area where we actually haven't done a lot of work and remains uh, an area where we will now pick up um, uh, work. We do have certain ideas for the priority setting. We were very inspired by what was happened recently in the CCLG UK space where they worked with the James Lind Alliance to do a priority setting partnership. I'm not sure we can do it to that level of detail in the short time we have, but we are in, we have written to them to try and do an abbreviated version. Uh, we also have started something called the Indian Childhood Cancer Initiative, which is a policy and advocacy initiative. And within that, uh, all stakeholders in the country are there. And so they, uh, the, they are working with us to try and develop uh, um, a framework for knowledge translation. And again, we should have some uh, concrete, tangible outcomes from this by the end of the year. I want to uh, end by thanking Asayop Park, as I've mentioned before, when we had an opportunity to talk in uh, Ottawa, is that this uh, funding was uh, a godsend for us, not just because of the funding, but because of the timing. Infog had just registered as, as a legal body in December 2021, uh, and then 2022, this came and 2023, uh, early, the money started coming in. And so the timing was perfect. It allowed us to start and hit the ground running. And that has allowed us to attract more uh, uh, funds and reach out to more people. Thank you so much. And I'll happily take questions. Uh, thank you, Ramanjeep. Uh, let's see from our park uh, committee members, any questions for Ramanjeep? Um, so thank you, thank you, Ramani. It was great. So and I like the name of your leukemia study for an Indian country. Icicle is good. But um, you, you, how did you manage the icicle study before you had the park funding? So did you have CRA or it was done just here and there? So and how was the park change the management of these studies? 
Yes, so thank you, Eric, for that question. Now, what happened is before uh, we did this, uh, we got the PARC grant, we had already done around 24 odd studies, either completed or ongoing. And most of them had been done on uh, zero budget. However, there were a few where a formal uh, funding um, uh, was available. And one of them was the ICL study. And uh, with the joint efforts of Vaskar Saha, who you know, uh, as well as Shripad Banavli in Mumbai, they together uh, reached out to two main sources. One was the Indian Council of Medical Research and the other was the National Cancer Grid. And those two collectively funded this. Um, and uh, it was open in the five main hospitals in the country and uh, recruited the patients. But the, uh, the, the what we have to recognize is that the four, those five centers, the All India Institute, the Tata Memorials, etc., have a strong track record of doing good quality research and have the research infrastructure. So what South Park did it is it tries it it has allowed us to democratize research capacity. So the funding has then gone to those centers who by themselves necessarily cannot write a research proposal or do the study themselves, but they're very happy to participate. They're all busy clinicians, generally working in ones and twos. And so if you can give them one staff who can take their study to the ethics committee, fill up all the documents, consent the patient, fill up the data, it takes away this huge burden from them and they can focus on the clinical work. And that was a luxury which they never had before. And so uh, the funding from Sanav Park has actually got, we haven't given the money to Tata and Girish is here, he knows about it because they have the staff. So we have given the money to centers who've not previously had the staff. And that has been uh, a great way of trying to bring equity in uh, this work. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, Carl. Yeah, it was ex exciting to see that. That's uh, I guess quite an ambitious docket you have, and it's but it looks like you're making a lot of progress. Um, I guess I just just one question for my personal bias, and then one one general question. So, for the Burkitt's lymphoma, um, just curious about your randomization. Um, and you know, I think dose de-escalation is a question we can't ask in the U.S. It's, I mean, so it's, you're really positioned to to ask, I think, the, the most important question in the field right now. Um, my my second question is like, as you're growing as a consortium, are you able to build in monitoring to ensure that um, you know data quality, integrity, things like that? Thank you, Carl, for your question. And so on the first part. Uh, if I don't know if you were aware there, the PSYOP uh, just which has gone by, um, Venkat, who got the half, the first Hans Peter Wagner Prize for his presentation, uh, showed the study which they had done where they reduces the doses by 25% for the high risk patients. And I think um, they are using that single arm uh, study done in a, a proof of concept done in a, one hospital to do nationally as a randomized study to show whether it you know it really leads to equal outcomes by reducing intensity and toxicity. So I think that's the, the broad outline. I'm sure there will be more details once the study is fleshed out. Now, with regards to your second question, uh, you're absolutely right. For the first few years, we've been in existence 2015, and we're an official uh, registered body since 2021 uh, December. We haven't had the funding for anything. And so now, since the last two years that we've had the funding, we provide the people, uh, our next step, I would say, after the next 12 to 18 months, is start hiring our first study monitors. So people who are going to go to individual centers and do source document verification, look at the quality of data. Currently, all the quality checks are done when the data is finally sent to the PI, uh, which is anonymized data. And then you can look at incomplete data, invalid data, et cetera. But we don't have any resource or mechanism where somebody visits the individual sites to check how is the research being conducted, how good is the documentation, how good is the data capture. Uh, but we recognize that for us to build the quality of our work, that has to happen. And so uh, as we hire our first statistician, we aspire to hire our first monitors and maybe 2024, 2025 would be the year for that. And then we will be able to do the monitoring. Thank, Thank you, uh, you Ramanjeep. So uh, I want to make sure we give enough time to our colleagues from POEM. Um, so if you don't mind, let's switch to uh, Iman or... Um, yeah, hello. You're presenting, right? Yes. 
Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm sharing. So, yep, perfect. Good, good evening. Um, I'm presenting the poem group. Uh, the poem group is formed of uh, uh, more than uh, 800 members from 120, uh, from more than 120 centers in the region and uh, uh, representing around 28 countries. Our mission is uh, to continuously improve pediatric cancer care through capacity building, uh, research, training, and advocacy in uh, the East and Mediterranean region by integrated uh, network teamwork. So I'm presenting today just a brief summary of the progress of our uh, project that's funded by Sci Park. Um, it's um, it's uh, for development and training of a core clinical research coordinator network. Um, Co-PI on this uh, project is uh, Dr. Asim, uh, the former president, and Dr. Rehab, uh, the director at the AUB office, uh, which is um, the central office of the POM group. The main goal of uh, our project here is uh, research capacity building uh, by developing research support expertise necessary to successfully conduct clinical research projects at participating institutions in the POM region. This project has two uh, main objectives. The first is to map the readiness of the regional institutions for the different types of prospective clinical studies. And uh, the second objective uh, is to train a core team of clinical research coordinators on prospective data collection and management of clinical trials as well as to support the, for a proportion of their time for the two years over which the studies would be initiated. As for our first objective, uh, to map the readiness of the regional institutions, uh, we have uh, formalized a, a survey for, uh, to map the research infrastructure. Uh, this survey was reviewed by a committee and then uh, distributed to 121 centers in the POM region. Uh, we have uh, received responses from 67 centers, uh, constituting the rate of 55% response rate. They were representing 26 countries in the region. Uh, in, in the chart you see here, uh, the green bars are the centers who completed the survey, while the orange bars are the total centers per country uh, that uh, uh, were approached with the survey. We are still in the process of analyzing the full uh, data that we collected from this uh, survey, and we are planning to uh, to prepare and to submit a manuscript showing the the, the infrastructure, uh, the research infrastructure in our region, as well as to identify the areas that needs to uh, enhance and to build capacity uh, in the research for, um, uh, for the POM region. As for our second uh, objective, to train a core team of uh, CRCs um, for prospective collection and management of clinical trials, uh, we were planning to start uh, our first um, prospective clinical study, and uh, osteosarcoma was chosen to be started with um, and in preparation for uh, for this uh, for this prospective study, we uh, had the need to train uh, clinical research coordinators um, not only for this study but also for all the prospective uh, clinical studies that we are planning uh, to initiate. So the first phase was to have a virtual training workshop. Uh, this workshop targeted all the nominated uh, coordinators from centers that showed interest, and uh, uh, we got uh, uh, we identified these uh, these coordinators uh, from the responses uh, in the research infrastructure survey, and we approached uh, the centers and the, the CRCs uh, in order to participate in this uh, uh, virtual uh, training workshop, and it. Um, uh, it was mainly based on uh, giving uh, uh, 
learning for uh, the basic clinical uh, research as well as uh, management of clinical uh, trials. Uh, this this one is being um, uh, it's already been conducted and uh, uh, it was held between 23rd of October till 10th of January. Uh, it lasted over 12 weeks and I'll give you some more details on it uh, in the next few slides. The, the second phase was to have a hands-on focused workshop and this was mainly to prepare for the osteosarcoma study. So the plan for this workshop was to include the centers who will be participating in the osteosarcoma study and to highlight the information needed for uh, the actual protocol uh, that will be very soon uh, uh, initiated. And then finally, phase three is uh, to uh, initiate the study with, uh, with like a regular monthly meeting for data discussion. This first uh, workshop, which was virtual, um, uh, in, uh, in the process of planning for this workshop, uh, a committee was formed. Uh, it was uh, it constituted six members from the Palm region and three from St. Jude faculty. This committee uh, met every two weeks to finalize uh, the workshop details as well as to follow up with the, uh, with the workshop itself. Uh, they met over uh, five months uh, for a total of nine meetings. The workshop, as I said, it uh, was conducted over 12 weeks and it consisted of three main modules, uh, including the good clinical practice, the introduction to pediatric oncology, as well as clinical data abstraction. In addition to seven uh, life mandatory lectures that were given, uh, as well as one live Q&A session. These live sessions, um, they were um, conducted by lecturers from the Palm region as well as St. Jude faculty. This is just to show you that uh, these were the program. It included e-learning. I know it's very difficult to read. It included e-learning modules as well as uh, live uh, sessions for uh, live lectures. We had 55 participants from uh, home centers representing 17 home countries uh, participated in this virtual training. Uh, and as you can see here, this chart uh, shows the number of institutions per country uh, who participated in this virtual workshop. Uh, we have we have monitored the attendance of the participants in the live session. Uh, somebody have, having his microphone is on. Okay, thank you. So uh, monitoring the attendance of the participants during the live uh, sessions, uh, it was seen that uh, usually over 70% of the participants uh, were um, attending the, the live uh, lectures uh, with an average of 77% uh, uh, of the participants and 76% uh, of the represented centers and constituted also uh, more than 86% of the represented countries. Each participant had to provide three certificates of completion, one for each module. Uh, 32 participants completed all the three modules, four completed two, and eight participants completed only one. And uh, we did not receive uh, any certificate yet from 11 participants. Um, we had distributed also an anonymous feedback survey to all participants to reflect their experience and suggestions. Uh, till to date, we got uh, 32 responses, uh, constituting around 58%, uh, but the survey is still open and we, we are hoping to get uh, more feedback. As for the second workshop, which is a hands-on focused training for the osteosarcoma study, um, the committee uh, was formed uh, from the same members of the virtual workshop, in addition to the osteosarcoma study main uh, PIs. Uh, so a total of eight POM members and three St. Jude members are uh, included in this committee. Uh, this, the committee had uh, eight meetings still to date and is currently working to finalize the workshop details. The workshop will be held in Istanbul next April. It will be a two-day workshop. Um, 
So another survey was sent to the 41 centers who participated in the virtual training workshop to determine their interest and their eligibility to be, participate in the upcoming osteosarcoma study. And finally, 27 centers were identified. Um, each participating center would be uh, uh, represented by one CRC and one local PI from their centers who will be invited to uh, the hands-on uh, workshop. The program is planned to include uh, breakout specific sessions for each of the CRCs and the PIs, in addition to common sessions uh, such as lectures and hands-on exercises. Uh, we are planning to have common sessions that will include information for the osteosarcoma protocol, uh, introduction to REDCap database, UCP requirements, as well as study implementation. The CRC sessions will cover uh, the CRF's uh, forms uh, detailed for each section of the protocol, as well as the adverse event forms, data abstraction, and red cap training. What the PI sessions will include uh, overview of the informed consent documents, study eligibility, uh, assessing and documenting disease response, reporting adverse events, and interactive sessions on the red cap. Uh, this is the proposed program for two, the two day workshop. Um, we uh, uh, it, uh, as I said, it will be uh, focused uh, uh, for the centers that will participate for the osteosarcoma uh, study, and it will, will be like uh, uh, the first step of initiation of this uh, protocol. Um, and this comes to, to uh, end my brief summary of uh, the activities that have been performed in the park project. Uh, till today, and uh, we're really thankful for Side Park for giving us uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, achieve these uh, objectives till now. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Iman. Uh, anybody else uh, with uh, comments, question for the last uh, cooperative group uh, and their work? Uh, yeah, so quick, yeah, question is why why you're still sarcoma? It's one of the most difficult disease to treat in kids. Um, it's been uh, suggested that we will start. It's not a randomized a study, but we chose uh, two standard treatment, which are the OS99 uh, and the MAP uh, protocols. Uh, so it will be a prospective uh, study for the standard uh, treatment that each center is following. So it's it's really uh, difficult to uh, to get the, uh, the first trial as a randomized uh, clinical prospective, but um, I know that it's difficult to achieve the surgical uh, control. That's why we have to map these centers for their feasibility to have a, a good local control in order to, um, to be able to participate in the study. Yeah, no, no. This is this was my question. When when we listen to Raman, for example, they pick the six GITC. So why didn't you pick uh, an easier disease to manage? Um, this yeah. was the consensus, or this was a decision from the top to the bottom, or? Uh, it was the one that's ready on the top, but we have another two uh, uh, protocols that uh, we are planning. And these were uh, the retinoblastoma and hopefully the acute lymphoblastic leukemia also. Yeah. Okay, anybody else with questions? Uh, this was the last, by the way, for the new uh, colleagues of the park uh, committee. This is the last um, award, uh, the last grant that we made so um, POEM started much later in, in, in 2023 than the rest of the colleagues. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, to uh, Iman and to all the colleagues from CanCare, from Info. Oh, very Alejandro, you raise for... your hand. Is that a hand, a question, or you wanted to say hello? <laughs> Alejandra, we can hear yes. you. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to all of those who presented. And I was very excited to hear Raman Deep presentation in India um, because I think uh, he was the only one mentioning in the objective number three, the uh, 
the objective of including parents and families' perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I'm here representing the voice of families and parents. And I think that's really, really important. And uh, on the first thing, I want to say, Ramandeep, that uh, at Childhood Cancer International, we have a very strong uh, group in um, Asia. Uh, we are all parents' organizations. And I think it's very, very important uh, if you need to uh, team up with them or just I can get you in touch. Uh, personally, I will be very, very interested in participate. Um, sorry. And um, I think it's a great, a great, um, I would just want to celebrate how important it is that in these kind of research or studies, the families or the parents or the, um, the survivors sometimes may have a voice or may have be heard. So thank you for doing that, Ramandeep. And at, at CCI, we are really open and uh, looking forward to uh, team up if necessary to include in our voice in the, in the study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. Um, one more time, welcome to the new colleagues of the Park Committee and thank you to our partners. We look forward to celebrating your achievements in, in a few months uh, down the road and uh, we can try to do this one more time. Thank you very much and have a good day, evening, wherever you are around the world. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.